I've never really been to Scandinavia before. The, the hotel was just all minimalist, you know? Just everything was just what you needed, you know, just a bed and sink. But it was good, because normally hotels, they get very confusing now. You, you, don't, you never know where the light switch is for stuff, or they have these sensor lights now, where you go in the bathroom and it just comes on. And you think, oh, that's good. But then you're on the loo and it goes off. <laughs> and you have to try and get it back on, so you have to do it. You're doing things you don't really want to be doing. And I, it's been so long since I've stayed in the hotel, they just had a normal tap that you turn on and you turn off. But they couldn't work the taps. I'm in this hotel room in Oslo, trying to get water. <laughs> and I, I called maintenance. And the guy just came up and went, you do this, you do that, idiot. <laughs> so I was very happy to be in this quite simple hotel room in Norway. And what I really liked was just one switch. It was like one master switch next to the door that controlled the whole room. So I thought, oh, this is so easy, because normally, you know, you've got to find the switch for different sections of the hotel room, then the lamps next to the bed, you don't know if it's on the neck. You know, you've got fiddling for the neck. <laughs> or you look at the wire, is it on the wire? <laughs> is it on the wire? Or the neck, is it the neck or the wire? <laughs> and then after about 20 minutes, oh, it's the stampy one, it's the stampy one! <laughs> so I was so thrilled that just one light turned everything off, one switch turned everything off, so I went. And this is after my gig. I was a little, I'd had a couple of drinks and it was late. And I thought, oh, I'll just switch that off. Obviously, bedtime. And it's hard to get back to the bed now because it's dark. So I'm, so I'm doing that walk when you're expecting to hit something. <laughs> so I got into my bed, and unbeknownst to me, I have no, no idea why this was there, there was a switch behind the pillow that also controlled the same lights. <laughs> so I lay in the bed, and then all the lights in the room went on. Somebody would come in. Hello? Hello? Is there somebody there? Hello? Well, that's very peculiar. So I went over to the door, turned the light off, dark again, made my way slowly back to the bed. Got myself in. Lay as soon as my head hit the pillow, the lights went back up. What on earth is going on? So I marched back quite quickly. Myself as some kind of sensor. So this time I was very, very careful. I slowly got to the bed and nothing happened. I was like, oh, this is fine. Rolled over, the light went on again. So I, ph I phoned maintenance. Now bear in mind, this man at maintenance already thinks I'm completely mental as a person. So I call him. I'm lying there now in the light. A lock, there's a knock on the door. I go, oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. He said, is it taps again? No, the taps are fine. <laughs> no, watch this, the lights keep going on and I don't know, I don't know why. There's something wrong. After a certain amount of time, they just go on. OK, I'm going to show you, all right? So I turn the light off and I'm standing in the dark with this Norwegian man. <laughs> follow, follow me, come with me. I'm holding him a bit. Come on, come with me. Come on, come with me. All right. Right. Are you there? Yes. Just stand there. <laughs> Just gonna get into the bed, okay? I lay in the bed and nothing happened. I'm just lying. I'm lying in the dark. And he just stood there and went, please let me go. So I won't go. So he, went, he was knocking over furniture. He made his way out to the door in the dark. I rolled over and the lights went on. tell you about my private life. Um, I've had some good news recently is that I've got... Um, my wife has always had a dream, OK, to own a little place in the countryside. And it became my dream when she told me about it every day for 10 years. <laughs> and recently, I bought a little place in the countryside for us, beautiful little place. It's very remote, very isolated, very private, rolling hills. It's, it's surrounded by a farm. It's not our farm, but it's just lovely. We didn't tell the children we were getting it. It was the most magical day when we first moved in, and we were standing outside, all of us, my children running around in the fields. They couldn't believe it, giggling, and the sun going down, and my wife and I holding hands, going, we did it. It's amazing. I'm so happy. And tears. It was beautiful. And lovely little animals, little birds, because you don't see lice birds in London. You know, in London, we have pigeons, sort of suicidal pigeons. <laughs> Come in front of the car, just look at you, kill me, end my life, it's not worth it. <laughs> and they just fly off at the last second. I don't even have the guts to end it! <laughs> the country, all these multicolored birds coming out of the woods like they were welcoming us to the country, making lovely noises. 
like they were saying, hello, welcome, thank you, you're, thank you for coming. But a brrrr, brrrr, my wife holding hands, children running around, lovely. Then the sun went down completely. Absolute total darkness, pitch black, terrified. We all both looked at where we thought we were. We were. Darling, are you there? I can't even see you. We should go to London. We can't do this, can we? We can't do this. Where are the children? Children! And it was like all those lovely daytime animals were instantly replaced by the night shift animals. <laughs> Noises from birds I've never heard before. Sinister sounds. I actually Googled what bird sounds like a child screaming in the woods. Seriously. There was just this. holding hands in a 360, edging to where we hoped the house was. I want to go home! We're drifting into the neighbour's field. And foxes, in London, when you see a fox, you see it for a second and you just go, oh look, there's a fox, and then it disappears, like into thin air. In the country, you hear the noises they make. They make this vile sort of, like they're vomiting violently. <laughs> Walking towards us. That with the. Cats, pussy cats, on heat. Is there a more sinister sound out there than a cat sort of whining? If only women were like this, how much easier would my teenage years have been? <laughs> have you met Beverly? <laughs> I think Beverly's up for it. I think you're right, Dave. Leave me to it. we made it into the house. You know, people in the country, they say things like, we never lock our doors in the country. Are you joking? I was putting furniture in front of the door. <laughs> I opened the curtains to see what it was like. There was a fox in my face. <laughs> oh my God, it's getting worse. Because <laughs> the fear is someone's going to break in in the night. What are you going to do if someone breaks in in the countryside? In London, you tell them where you live, you tell them your, your road, your postcode, the number, then the police will come to your house. In the country, people say things like, ignore the postcode, that takes you to another house. <laughs> or, why don't you swap postcodes with that house? <laughs> Every house just has names. The Glebe House, the Rectory, the Little Cottage on the Hill. <laughs> I've just spent my whole life giving people directions. There's a dip, there's a dip in the road. You'll, you'll feel it, you, you won't see it, you'll feel a slight dip. There's some roadkill, it used to be there. There might be some roadkill, there's a left, there's a sharp left. You think you're driving into a hedge. You've got to trust it's there, you've got to trust it's there. <laughs> then you'll be on a lane for about a mile, then you'll come to a huge oak tree. Then you know you've gone too far. You must turn back and go back there. Oh, for God's sake! You can't be saying this to the police on the phone. You might as well pass it on to the burglar. How did you find the place? Can I put you on? Do you mind? <laughs> because the onus is on us as men. This is what my wife does. Every time there's a noise in the house, she wakes me up in bed. She's like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Coming from the kitchen, did you hear that noise? And I always deny it, even though I, I've heard it because I'm awake, terrified. And I said, no, no, it must be the wind, even though I know there's no wind in the kitchen. She always says the same thing, go and see. Go on, go downstairs and see. I'm always like, well, that wasn't exactly the way I was going to handle this situation. I was hoping we would hide as a family <laughs> and await rescue. But Michael, you're the man of the house. Yes, you're right, I am the man of the house, but what concerns me at this very moment is I think there's another man in the house. <laughs> And I've decided to make him the man of the house on this occasion. <laughs> but what about the children? Good idea. Send one of them. Send the older one, the nine-year-old. I've also had five teeth out <laughs> this year. OK, that's bad, I know. Four wisdom teeth, all of them, and another tooth I've had to have out because I've had terrible trouble with my teeth. It all started last year, I had this pain in my tooth because, you know, last year I was fine, my knee was fine, my calf was fine, my shoulder was fine, I was in pretty good nick. Then I had this pain in my tooth and I went to the dentist, you know, as you do, open my mouth, which is key, obviously you have to, you have to be asked. <laughs> you don't just walk in, ha? Huh? <laughs> 
So I sat in the chair and he's like, he looks in my mouth. He's like, you know what, you've got a rotting wisdom tooth. I've got to take it out. I've got to take it out. It's rotting. And I didn't really mind. I didn't even know I had wisdom teeth, to be honest. I know that my wife's had them out. So I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever you like. Also, there's a TV there. I was watching this morning. It's right in my face. I was watching Philip Schofield chatting away. I was like, yeah, go for your life. So he just got to work. And I just lay there. And I, I lay there for a while. I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe more than an hour. And I thought, I've been here ages. So I flicked my eyes over, you know, to see if the dentist was OK. And he wasn't. Oh my God. It's quite stressed. Sort of sweat coming off his forehead. He was straining like this. So I tried to ask him if it was okay, which is hard when your mouth is completely numb and he had like equipment in it. Came out as one sort of sound. <laughs> Just one noise. Like a Northern Irishman saying mirror. That's an odd moment. Mirror. <laughs> I was looking in the mirror. They're not even in the dentist. They don't know what's going on there. I was like, Aah! and he pulled back and he went, no, 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 I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. I thought it was something personal. I was like, oh my god. Tell me what the matter is. You poor thing. He said, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Congratulations, that's excellent. That excellent career. Really well done. And I've never not been able to get somebody's tooth out. I can't get your tooth out. It's stuck. So, okay, look, you need to calm yourself down. <laughs> I know you OK, I'm not in any pain whatsoever. I've got nowhere to be. I'm watching this morning. I'm absolutely completely fine. Go away, have a cup of tea, chill out, come back, try again. I believe in you. <laughs> he said, the reason you don't feel any pain is I've numbed your mouth, OK? Look, and he passed me a mirror. I am not going to lie to you. Till the day I die. I will never forget the image that greeted me in the reflection, OK? This side of my face was literally twice the size of this side. There was bruising I hadn't even noticed. My bib was covered in blood already. I couldn't even see it. There was blood dripping out the side of my face like a sort of vampire. My eye was sort of closing. I was like, what the fuck are you doing to me? <laughs> so that's what I was trying to tell you. We've got to get you out of here. I've got to get you to a hospital. Follow me. And he ran out of the room. I just followed on behind him. Hello? Excuse me, hello? <laughs> I have to say, I felt particularly sorry. The poor people in the waiting room, you know, they're sitting there with the, with the fish tank, reading old magazines, reassuring their children everything was going to be fine at the dentist's visit. I come out with bruising, blood all over my bib, blood coming out the side of my mouth. Excuse me? <laughs> have anybody seen the dentist? They were like, okay, children, you were right. Come with mummy. Come on, come with mummy now. Come on. I turned around to that idiot on reception. There's some woman there. She's like, would you like to book an appointment with the hygienist? <laughs> the hygienist? I need a fucking plastic surgeon. <laughs> Where's my dentist going? I look out the door. This idiot is in his car. He's in his car with the door open. He's still got his gloves on. He's going, get in. <laughs> get in. Are you serious? Just get in. All right, all right. So I get in the car with this man. He starts hurtling through the streets. Literally 10 minutes earlier, I was in the dentist chair in relative comfort watching this morning. Now we're driving through traffic. He's hooting and so My wife actually called me up on the phone. Like, hello? Hello? Hello, darling. You're still at the dentist? I'm with the dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? I'm not at dentist. I'm with dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? No, I'm not at the dentist. I'm with the dentist. Why are you being so pedantic? I'm not being. Pum, bum, bum. <laughs> I'm in the car. Oh, you're on your way home. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> well, what is wrong with you? The dentist is thriving. The dentist is riding. No, oh, he's riding. He's writing. The dentist is writing. The dentist is rising. The dentist is writing. The dentist is writhing. I'll call you a waiter. You're calling a waiter. You're having lunch with the dentist. Leave it. Finally, we show up at this door. He's like, You see that door? I'm like, Yeah. Go in there, OK? That's a hospital. They're going to treat you. You're going to be fine. They know to expect you. Just tell them your name. Everything's going to be fine. Get out. Come on. Get out. So I get out to this guy. He just drives off. He leaves me. 
I'm now standing on the pavement, right? I've still got the bib on, the blood-soaked bib. I'm standing there. I saw my reflection in the glass. I have to. I looked horrific. I was worried it was going to startle the receptionist, so I came in at my best angle. <laughs> Hello, sir, can I help you? Yes, I was wondering... <laughs> she was like, oh, my God! Oh, my God! Have you been attacked? So, no, I haven't been attacked. I don't go out in the bib expecting assault. <laughs> I haven't been attacked so many times, I now wear absorbent clothing. <laughs> Apparently, you're expecting me. <laughs> so, um, OK, sir, can I take your name, please? Now, the problem is, and you'll know this if you're on a local anaesthetic, you can't move your lips. I had no control of my lips, and you need that to do certain letters of the alphabet. The M, for example, greatly requires lip work. <laughs> M, and I couldn't do it. I need that to identify myself. So she's like, can I take your name, please? Yes. I use Akum Akin Kaka. <laughs> Akul Akin Kaka. <laughs> oh, Akul Akin Dabu. <laughs> Akul Akin Gaga. Oh, oh what's my lip? <laughs> right, okay, I think the best thing for you to do is if you head down the corridor, take a seat in the waiting room, and we'll try to get to the bottom of this, okay? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was quite pissed off she didn't recognize me, okay? I was on quite a lot of television. I know that this side of my face was pretty much, you know, unrecognizable, but this side was fine. I tried to jog her memory as I went down the corridor. Unbelievable! <laughs> So we're getting to the waiting room now, and the anaesthetic starts to wear off. I feel a bit, you know, it hurts a bit now. I'll start making this sort of low, sort of ET type sound on my own in the corner. <laughs> I try, people around, I, I try to be nice, I try to look at other people in there. <laughs> Thankfully, I think for everybody, the nurse came in quite quickly. Akul Akin Kaka? <laughs> I didn't respond, I just sat there. <laughs> she came right up to my face. Excuse me. Uh? Are you Akul Akin Kaka? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what is your name? Akul Akin Kaka. That is actually me. Sorry, chap. This is my real name, obviously, it's Akulakin Gaga. But here they know me as Akulakin Gaga. I'm a certain <laughs> So they take me up into this room, sort of private room, and she's really nice to me now. She's like, oh my god, you've had a terrible day, haven't you, sir? Now, I have. I had a real horrible day. Please, you go help me. No, yes, don't worry, don't panic at all. We do this all the time. We're going to give you a general anaesthetic. We're going to take your tooth out. Everything's going to be fine. If you just want to take all your clothes off and pop this hospital gown on, we'll take you straight through to surgery. For all my clothes off. <laughs> you see, you take all your clothes off, pop the gown on, we'll take you through. Why do I have to take all my clothes off? All the patients have to wear the hospital gown. That's, that's, that's hospital policy. Yes, but you don't think I'm the fan of fit to away from. I've got a problem with my tooth, <laughs> which is located in my lap. <laughs> I don't have a tooth embedded in my arm. <laughs> they come out wear my own clothes. But no, you'll know what it's like if you've been to hospital. They humiliate you for no reason at all. You have to put this sort of piece of shit, floral, thin gown on the wrong way round with your ass hanging out. I have to go into the loo with this gown, with my, literally my bare bottom hanging out of the back, and you put this on for no reason. It's why everyone in the hospital has their clothes on the right way round. You have to put it on like that. I'll come out. Satisfied? So, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> Fuck off, it's perfect. <laughs> I've got a tooth hanging out, and now I've got nug bone out. There's no reason why I have to have nug bone out. It's disgraceful, it's despicable, it's deplorable, it's abhorrent. What on earth are you going to do to me? I'm the general aesthetic that requires access to my ass. Answer me. <laughs> There will be repercussions. <laughs> There'll be what? Repercussions! <laughs> Don't take that tone with me, Mr. Akinkaka. For the last time, <laughs> my name is <laughs>
fucking caca! <laughs> now I have to follow this woman down the corridor, literally down the corridor. There's no way I'm going to walk down a hospital corridor with my ass just flapping away here. So people just happen to be behind me looking at my ass. No, that is not going to happen. So I go down the, I go down the wall like this. Unbelievable. <laughs> There's no reason why I have to have my mama. Why have my mama? Somebody's actually doing the same thing towards me. All right, quickly, Evie! Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Finally, they lie me down on a hospital bed, and I'm thrilled now because I'm my ass is concealed. I'm happy. The anaesthetist comes in, a very serious, sort of quite old man. Hello. I'm the anaesthetist. I'm going to give you a general anaesthetic. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to give you a small prick on your left arm. You're going to be knocked out immediately. You okay with that, Michael? I'm like, oh, Michael. <laughs> That's my name. He says, yes, I know exactly who you are. My three daughters are big fans of yours. Oh, that's fair kind. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> then he put the needle in my arm and he went, my wife and I not so keen, and put me out! <laughs> oh, the I was like, you mother... Oh. <laughs> I woke up, I don't know how many hours later, two or three hours later, I didn't know where I was. Sometimes I wake up at home in a deep sleep and I don't know where I am. This was the deepest sleep I've ever had. It was a general anaesthetic. I woke up, it was in bed, it was bright, it was hot. I'd come out of the covers, you know, when, you know, when like in a heat wave you come out, you know? When your ass is at the highest point, you come out with the duvet. You know when you're lying down, uh, at some stage during the night, the duvet sort of tucks in, and you just sort of roll out like that. <laughs> so I wake up. And within moments, I feel this breeze coming in the back. <laughs> so I turn around to see my entire family standing there. Have we got my sunset? Pants down, you're the loser. 